Hello everyone, welcome back to another guide for Botania. Today we'll be going over some of the different rings and other trinkets you can make in Botania. So let's hop right into it. Another way to store mana is with the Band of Mana. And to craft it, you need 4 mana steel and 1 mana tablet. If the tablet does have mana already in it, it will be transferred to the Band of Mana. As you can see, I have a full one in my inventory. And a good thing that you can do with this is it can store mana, but not take up an inventory slot. And to equip it, I can either press G to open my baubles or by clicking this little symbol up here. On the left side of my screen here are my baubles. I have two slots for my rings. I have one slot for a necklace, one slot for a headpiece, one slot for a charm, one slot for my body, and one slot for a belt piece. Now, the band of mana is a ring, so I equipped it in my ring slot. Or if I take it and I quickly change the weather, I can right click with it, and if I wasn't in creative, it would have just equipped right here. And I'll just get rid of that. The band of aura is a way to passively generate mana. To craft it, you need four mana steel and one rune of mana. Now if I take it off, go into my baubles and place it in, what it will do is it will passive generate mana to refill my band of mana. It is pretty slow and it will not replace just dumping it into a mana pool. But again, it's if you're out and about, it's a way to not keep running out of mana. The ring of the mantle will apply haste to the wearer. To craft it, you need four mana steel ingots, a gold pickaxe, and a rune of earth. So again, I take it and equip it. You'll see that it has given me haste too. A thing to note about this is that even though I, it is constantly giving me haste too, it won't actually expand mana unless I actually dig something or move my hand. So if I decide to dig dirt, not in creative, you can see that I am digging faster than normal. And I will go and place the dirt back. It has made me dig faster and it does use mana every time I dig something, but also every time you basically move your hand. So if I white, if I left click, like I am here, then it uses up mana. That also means for swinging a sword and any other things that you generally left click to do. The Ring of Dexter's Motion allows the wearer to dodge attacks while fighting. And to craft it, you need four mana steel, one rune of air, and one emerald. So I'll continue with the same thing. Let me take this off. I'll equip it. And to use it, simply, if you're moving and you want to dodge something, double tap any of your directional keys. Double tap forward, I move forward. And see that little bar? That shows you the recharge. So as I go around, I can just simply go and dodge. This will use mana every time you use it, but it is pretty useful. You can just go running, start jumping, and whoop, whoop, mess that up. But yes, as you can see, by double tapping forward, left, right, and back. You can move in any direction as long as you double tap. The Ring of Chordata gives the wearers fish-like attributes. And to craft it, you need four mana steel, one luck of the sea, one puffer fish, one raw cod, and one rune of water. So, like I said, if I take this and quickly change the weather, I'll equip it and let me take a dive in this little pool I have. So as you can see in the top right, I have two little enchantments, I guess you can call them. One makes me swim faster, and the other one allows me to see underwater. But another great thing is that I don't lose air as I swim, as you can see. Now, if I go in, take this off, the enchantment will fade, even though it's not very noticeable, you can see a slight change to the lighting, and my breath is going down. Let me, uh, let me go and toss that right back on. And again, 
I'm all fine. Breath ain't going down, I can swim, see, and everything is all nice. The Sojourner's Sash makes traveling on foot a lot easier. And to craft it, you'll need four leather, one rune of air, one rune of earth, and one mana steel. So if I go and I pop this off, now this is a belt, so it will go in your belt slot. So like I said, it makes traveling on foot a lot easier, because I can move faster, I can jump higher, and I'll take less fall damage than I would normally. So I can go and traverse my little item stands, and I can also just move around a lot easier. The tectonic girdle negates knockback for the wearer. And to craft it, you need four leather, one mana steel, one rune of earth, and one rune of fire. So let's take it on, but not equip it just yet. So I come over here to my little demonstrations. You can see I have a pressure plate, redstone, and a dispenser. And if I walk on it, boop, I get shot and hit with an arrow. Let's do it one more time. You can see, when I step on the pressure plate, I get knocked off it. Now, if I take the tectonic girdle, again, it's a belt, placed in your belt slot. I will go and walk on the pressure plate. Nope, still good. Let me step off it, and nope, not going anywhere. Like I said, it negates knockback. Very useful if you're on a precarious edge and you don't want to fall off and you got some skeletons shooting at you. The snowflake pendant acts similar to the frostwalker enchantment. And to craft it, you need four mana infused string, one rune of winter, one rune of water, and a mana steel. Let me pop this off. And it is a necklace. So let me go place it in my necklace slot. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is that some various accessories you can actually see your character wearing. So if you can see on my character screen, you can see the little snowflake pendant around my neck. So, as I said, it acts like the Frostwalker enchantment, and as I walk, it will create wa it will create snow. Now, I know the Frostwalker enchantment doesn't do this, but this is just an added bonus if you need some snow. So let me just walk around, I'll create a nice little pile of it. But the big thing is, is that it will freeze the water when you walk on it. And it will give you about a five block radius around you for the range. So I got my little pool here, and it's not freezing. But if I hop on it, it's all frozen. And then I'll run around, you can see parts of it kind of decaying, but instead of turning to water, they just turn into ice. Now, let me hop off it. As you can see, all of it's starting to unfreeze and now it is back to water. You can't mine any of this to get ice. If you do, nothing will really happen. And like I said, you don't have to be on the water to activate it. If I come to this little cubby, boop. Now I have all of this ice I can walk on. The Pyroclast Pendant stops the wearer from being on fire. And to craft it, you need four mana infused string, one rune of fire, one rune of summer, one mana steel, and that will give you your Pyroclast Pendant. Let me take it off and let's head over to a little testing area. So over here, I have a dispenser with a flint and steel. Let me use it. As you can see, it creates fire. If I walk in the fire, I get set on fire. Let me stay in, and as you can see, I'm on fire. Instead of going to water, I can simply equip my Pyroclast Pendant. Now I'm not on fire. So if I stand in it, and then I get out of it, I'm not on fire. The Pyroclast Pendant, like I said, will stop the user from being set on fire. Now, it won't stop fire damage, such as, as you saw when I was physically standing in the fire, or if I decide to take a swim in lava, it, it, won't, it won't do much help. But, if I happen to go through it, and then get lit on fire, it will immediately put it out. So as long as I'm not in fire, 
I don't have to worry about it. This can be useful if you're, for instance, fighting blazes that tend to set stuff on fire. The Cirrus Pendant gives the wearer double jump. And to craft it, you need four Man and Fuse String, one Rune of Air, one Rune of Autumn, and some Mana Steel. Now if I take this off, I'll put it on, and like I said, one, two. I get to double jump. And a nice thing about it is that if you use the second jump in a certain amount of time, it will actually negate fall damage. So if I hop off here, I take half a heart of fall damage. If I jump, and then I go boop, no damage. Now, to show you, let me head up on top of my pillar there, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So, I'm now all the way up on top of my pillar, which is, if I remember correctly, 30 blocks tall. You can see my guide area, the village, flowers, horses, ooh, a nice big tree. But, without further ado, let me show you exactly what does. So if I hop off, I get down and go boop, I only take a heart and a half damage. If I really wanted to try, I could probably jump lower and take no damage. But normally, from a fall that tall, I should have died. But with the Sears Pendant, I am fine. A nice thing you can do to kind of use this with another item is with the Sojourn Sash. Take it, equip it. Now I can jump two blocks tall, but now I can double jump four blocks. Then I can run faster, and with a double jump, with a double and higher jump, I can actually move faster. So, it's a nice combo, which personally, I'm a fan of. As long as you got something to stop taking the fall damage, because this is... Not the best, I will admit. But, got some boots, or feather falling boots, you should be fine. So that is the Sears Pendant, along with the Sojourn Sash. Now you have all you need to continue your journey through Botania. That is all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. But thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye.